Have you ever tried to open your eyes into the water without any equipment? Full of hope to see the beautiful fishes on the shades of blue? I'm sure you have. We all have. And the truth is that we see nothing. I mean, it's completely a blurred vision and it's aggressive and we go out of the, of the water with this frustration that, well, it's so beautiful, but it's, it's so difficult to understand why we're not prepared. The experts, they can do that. The, uh, the scuba divers, they can do that. The engineers, they can do that. If you're not prepared to that, it, it's so difficult to understand the ocean. But it's worth trying. It's worth trying because if you have a look at these two images there, this is exactly the same ocean. In one case, the ocean says something which we can understand. There is something going on which is a, a, an ugly situation. In the other case, this is beautiful and we, we can't see what is happening, but there is something going on. And this is true that we are more, uh, if this is a blue planet, we are more on the green side of the planet, we are more easy with forest and the countryside. This is true. And we, we are used to live with this old uh, companion, with, which is the ocean, is uh, patient, is quiet, and uh, we love it, but we are on the green side. But if there is one reason why we should try to understand a bit better what is going on is this one. No blue, no green. No water, no life. So, the minimum we should do is to try to understand a bit better what is going on in the ocean. Try to open the eyes and try to understand what it... Because, I mean, one billion of people, of us, are depending upon fish for their source of protein. Um, half of the oxygen we, we have for us is, is coming from the, from the ocean. And 99% um, of the space available on Earth for life is in the ocean. So yes, okay, maybe we are on the beach, maybe we are on the green side, but frankly, we live on a blue planet. The ocean covers two-thirds of the surface, this is obvious, this is the blue dot, okay. So we have to think about it, and it's worth trying to uh, well, start looking at the ocean with um, some more information. And if you're not completely convinced about the fact that it's, uh, it's useful for us as a citizen to know a bit more about the ocean, think about the fact that this is the biggest machine on Earth, this ocean. Have a look at these ocean rivers on the, on the screen. I mean, this, we, we call them currents. But if you want to guess what is the, 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 the power of this machine, you have to understand that, well, think about the river you know around you. And you sum all the rivers, the, the land river you know. And then you add all the rivers you don't know. Okay? Then you multiply by 100, and maybe you will reach something which is um, equivalent to what we have of this kind of currents that go around the Antarctic, etc. The, the transport of water masses by the ocean is so huge that it's very difficult to imagine. But this is the case. This is the biggest machine we have on Earth, transporting heat from the equator to the pole. I mean, transporting life, trans uh, moving oxygen from the surface to the bottom. I mean, this is impressive. And we cannot survive without this ocean. And um, since we know that something is happening to the ocean, it's worth trying as a citizen to understand a bit better what is going on. And the good news is that we are prepared to do that. We know, well, let's, let's talk about the weather forecast. We, we know the weather forecast. We know how to access this information. We are used to that. This is part of our life. This is on our smartphone in the pocket. We know the temperature for tomorrow. Um, this, is, uh, this is obvious to us that if we want to forecast the rain, uh, it's, it's possible, the winds, okay. Let's talk about the equivalent for the ocean. We need the, the forecast for the temperature. Instead of the winds, we will take the equivalent, which is the currents. And instead of the rain, the humidity, do you have any idea what is the equivalent of the humidity in the ocean? The third one? Salin salinity? Yes, the equivalent is salinity. Imagine the fresh water and then it depends. So temperature, salinity, and then currents, and then you start thinking as someone understanding the ocean. And then you add the acidity, the ice coverage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so you have your personal um, 
ocean forecast, ocean reports. And the good news is that we, we can do that today. This is, this is doable and we, we do it. We do it every day. And just to explain to you what is happening or what, has, uh, what we have been doing during the, the, the last decade, I'm just calling these two gentlemen, the big guys, uh, the, the, because they have completely changed the, the way we approach the Earth and we use today their name and their vision and, and their, uh, their methods. The first one on the left, maybe you, you know him, is, is Mercator, Gargus Mercator. He was born in what is Belgium today, uh, five centuries ago. And he has simply invented map, the in innovative maps. Before Mercator, we had to, to, to explain the Earth, we had to transport the globe to the colleague and explain what is. But he has projected this on a map, and then he has put different maps, and then put it on a book, and we, we, we call it Atlas. And thanks to Mercator, it was possible to simplify this information to something which was available for people. And so you can go to your colleagues and share this information. So he has simplified, simplified this. And the, on the right, his colleague was born a bit later in, in Poland, and this is Nicolas Copernicus. He's done something which is terrible. He has put the Earth at the rightful place on the solar system. But the, the thing is that this is not only the solar system. He said, the Earth, this is not about uh, faith. This is not about, this is about facts. This is, this is something, this is serious information. You must know what is happening. It can be explained. It can be explained, and you could have the explanation yourself. This is a kind of public good information. And so today, we have these two uh, ideas that are doing something which is really good for the ocean. With Mercator Ocean, we are, pro we are producing forecasts every day. We're using the data from the satellites that are flying around the, the, the globe. We are using the, uh, the, the measurements that are providing from people at sea. Uh, or profiling floats, we are combining everything, we are developing super softwares, we are running them on super computers, and we simplify everything, like Mercator, on a map, digital map, and uh, every day with the, the currents, the temperature, the salinity, and, and uh, whatever you want, and for today, for the coming two weeks, this is the forecast, and also for the last decade, so can, you can play with this data to derive the trends and assess what is going on in the ocean. And this is, this is happening. This is, this is done. And with this Copernicus program for the European Union, the thing is that the message is very clear. The information about the Earth, this is public good information. It must be open to anyone. It must be free. So this is open and this is free. And this is more than that. It must be sustained. So we must sustain, they do sustain with this Copernicus program in the EU, a fleet of satellites to explore, a fleet of services to provide this information, such as the marine service. And at the end of the day, combining this Mercator and this Copernicus, we have a marine service providing to citizens, thousands of citizens on all continents, daily uh, data on the earth, on the ocean. So, this is today the situation. We can open the eye on the, into the water. And let's explore what it means precisely. Think about this old companion, the ocean, so important for our life, for humankind. Then you can have a look at him, or I should say at it, the ocean, and uh, look at the symptoms. I mean, uh, is there, is there any problem there, or uh, do, we, do we know something about the, uh, the, the sea level, the temperature? Is it normal? Is it, uh, this is the, situation, the, last, the same situation that last year? Do we have any idea of, of the difference? Uh, what can we explain, what, et cetera, et cetera? You can navigate into the ocean in the three dimensions, in the four dimension with the, with the time, and you play with that. You can zoom in the generation. You can check what was said that the Red Sea, in the salinity of the Red Sea, is higher than uh, in the rest of this region. This is true, you can see this on this, on, the, on this picture. You can also go to the Med Sea yourself. You don't need anyone, you go yourself in the Med Sea, looking at the season, looking at the situation in the Adriatic Sea, checking why this is, cold, this is a cold water event today, what is happening. And at the end of this, your eyes fully open in the water, into the water, you reach the earth beat of the ocean.
I like so much this, 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 this vision of the ocean. I mean, we are there. This is really something that is now offered to us. And so the last thing is, what will you do yourself with this data now? You don't need anyone, huh? we, we're clear. They are prepared by the best scientists. They are fully assessed. We use the best technologies for observing the, the ocean. Okay, we put the best. But now this is very simple. This is a simple information which is made available to you. This is the temperature, this is the current. You're looking for something, this is there. This is open, this is free. You can build your personal dashboard on the ocean. You decide. And it's time to decide what to do. You can be curious, for instance. You can um, say, well, I'd like to understand a bit better what, what is going on. Think about the hurricanes, these terrible hurricanes that are devastating Caribbean and the US coast. What can the ocean say about that? Well, for instance, you can see on this map, so the warm waters are in red and the, the cold waters are in blue. And this is an, an animation where you can see the path of the hurricane. And you can see that the temperature is decreasing when the hurricane is passing by because the energy of the ocean is transferred to the hurricane, is pumped by, by the hurricane. And because of that, the intensity of the hurricane will increase and it will reach the coast with uh, in, in a, a, a very strong intensity. So the ocean says to you, well, you should monitor my fever during this season because then you could have some warning situation if I have so much heat in, the, uh, in this region, then it could be uh, a risky situation. Okay, just, just monitor, just knowing what is the situation, just have a look at it. Or you could be one of the uh, 30 million people um, working in, uh, in something depending on the marine sector, 30 million jobs in, on, on the earth, trillion of, uh, of euros that are, that it is the blue economy and the OECD identifies this, this sector, the blue growth economy, as something with a very, very um, much possibility for innovation and growth. And this is clearly a place where sustainable development means something. The wise use of these marine resources, this, this huge amount of ideas that we could have to uh, explore this and to use this on a wise, with, with, with all the, the information we need to that. So you could be entrepreneurs, get this data, and propose something, for instance, for optimizing the ship routing, save fuel for that. This is doable, the data are available. Play with that, invent something. This is done already by some, some people, and every day there are, there are uh, new ideas for that. This is, this is great, this is really an, an ocean for innovation. And you could also decide by yourself that it's worth assessing your own impact on the situation. When, well, imagine you live uh, along the river and you, you, you put uh, some plastic in the river, okay, and then the plastic is, is, uh, is uh, floating and then reach the Med Sea. And then this is disseminated by the currents of the Med Sea. So in this image you can see the influence of different rivers around the Med Sea. And then it will be absorbed by the, by, uh, by the fishes, and then you will eat the fish, and then you will have plastic in your body. Actually, you have. So with this, you can be fully aware of what is going on and what you are doing yourself. Or you could also go back to the first thing, which is the climate, listening about what was said by the, um, by the Fiji presidency of the COP23, that the ocean is something that is really critical, yes, it is, or something which was said by uh, Irina Bokova, there are no climate solutions without the ocean, citizen of the, of, of the world, citizen of the earth, we cannot live without the ocean. So I leave the last word to uh, the seal, this postcard, choose the message. Well. Let's say, let's say the message is, now you know, no excuse. Invite the ocean in your, in, in your life. Invite you, the ocean at home. Ocean yourself. 
play with this data. They are available, they are prepared by the best people, they are using the best technology, they are proposed openly and freely by Copernicus, and um, the more they, they, they are used, the better. And we have different examples for doing uh, great things, but I'm sure you have more than that. Thank you very much.